Want to score over 850 in your HESI MedSurg exam? Then let's get started. We'll go over each question and the correct and incorrect answer and view the rationale. A patient with heart failure is prescribed furosemide. What is the primary purpose of furosemide in heart failure management? Increase heart rate, reduce blood pressure, increase urine output, enhance blood viscosity. A is incorrect. Furosemide is a diuretic that primarily increases urine output and reduces fluid volume. It does not have an effect on the heart. B is incorrect. While furosemide can indirectly reduce blood pressure by decreasing fluid volume, its primary action is diuresis, not blood pressure reduction. C is the correct answer. Furosemide is a loop diuretic that increases urine output by inhibiting sodium reabsorption into the loop of Henle. This helps reduce fluid volume in the patient with heart failure. D is incorrect. Furosemide reduces blood viscosity by decreasing fluid volume, so this option is incorrect. Remember to pause the video after I read the question and then we'll discuss the answer. Which electrolyte imbalance is commonly associated with Addison's disease? Hyperkalemia, hyponatremia, hypokalemia, hypernatremia. A is correct. Addison's disease leads to decreased adrenal function, causing a deficiency in aldosterone. This results in sodium loss and potassium retention, leading to hyperkalemia. B is incorrect. Addison's disease is associated with hyperkalemia due to decreased aldosterone levels leading to potassium retention, not hyponatremia. C is incorrect. Addison disease causes hyperkalemia, not hypokalemia. D is incorrect. Addison's disease is not typically associated with hypernatremia. It is more commonly linked with hyperkalemia and hyponatremia. During a blood transfusion, a patient develops chills, fever, and lower back pain. What complication is the patient likely experiencing? Hemolytic reaction, allergic reaction, septic reaction, or TACO? Pause the video, try to answer the question, and then I'm going to go over the answers. A is incorrect. Hemolytic reactions present with symptoms like fever and chills, but lower back pain is not a typical feature. Lower back pain is more indicative of a septic reaction. B is incorrect. Allergic reactions may cause fever, but they are not typically associated with lower back pain. This symptom points more towards a septic reaction. C is correct. Symptoms such as chills, fever, and lower back pain during a blood transfusion are indicative of a septic reaction, which occurs due to bacterial contamination of the blood product. TACO presents, so D is also incorrect, TACO presents with symptoms related to fluid overload, such as respiratory distress and hypertension, not lower back pain. Which nursing intervention is essential for a patient with COPD experiencing respiratory distress? A. Administering a bronchodilator, administering a sedative, providing a high sodium diet, encouraging deep breathing exercises. Pause the video and try to answer the question. A is correct. Bronchodilators help relax the airway, smooth muscles, and improve airflow, which is crucial to managing respiratory distress in COPD. B is incorrect. Administering a sedative is contraindicated in a patient with respiratory distress, as it can further depress the respiratory system. C is incorrect. A high-sodium diet is not relevant to managing respiratory distress in COPD. D is incorrect. While deep breathing exercises are beneficial in managing COPD, they are not suitable during acute respiratory distress. The priority is to administer a bronchodilator. What dietary modification is recommended for a patient with chronic kidney disease and elevated blood urea nitrogen? Increased protein intake, low potassium diet, fluid retention, low protein intake. Pause the video and choose your answer. A is incorrect. 
In CKD, a low protein intake is recommended to reduce the accumulation of nitrogenous waste products, not an increased protein intake. B is incorrect. While managing electrolyte imbalances is crucial in CKD, elevated BUN is more directly addressed by reducing protein intake rather than adjusting potassium levels. C is incorrect. Fluid restriction is typically recommended in advanced stages of CKD to manage fluid overload, but it may not directly impact elevated bond levels. D is correct. A low-protein diet is recommended for patients with CKD and elevated BUN to reduce the workload on the kidneys and manage uremic symptoms. Which assessment finding indicates a potential complication in a post-operative patient who underwent abdominal surgery? Urine output of 200 ml in the first hour, normal bowel sounds, clear breath sounds, redness and swelling at the incision site. Pause the video and choose your answer. A is incorrect. While low urinary output can be a concern, it's not specific to abdominal surgery complications. B is incorrect. Normal bowel sounds are a positive finding and not indicative of a complication. C is incorrect. Clear breath sounds are positive and not indicative of a complication related to abdominal surgery. D is the correct answer. Redness and swelling at the incision site may indicate infection, a common complication in post-operative patients. What is a priority nursing intervention for a patient experiencing a hypertensive crisis? Administering a beta blocker, providing a high sodium diet, encouraging physical activity, administering a rapid actin antihypertensive. Pause the video and choose your answer. A is incorrect. Beta blockers may be used, but in a hypertensive crisis, the priority is to administer a rapid actin antihypertensive for immediate blood pressure reduction. B is incorrect. A high sodium diet is contraindicated in hypertensive crisis as it may worsen fluid retention and increase blood pressure. C is incorrect. Physical activity is generally contraindicated in a hypertensive crisis. The focus is on reducing blood pressure first. D is correct. A hypertensive crisis requires prompt reduction of blood pressure to prevent organ damage. Rapid actin antihypertensive medications are used for this purpose. Which symptom is characteristic of a tension type headache? Throbbing pain? unilateral pain, nausea and vomiting, bilateral non-pulsatile pain. Pause the video and choose your answer. A is incorrect. Throbbing pain is more characteristic of migraines, not tension type headaches, which typically presents with a steady non-pulsatile pain. B is incorrect. Tension type headaches often involve bilateral pain, not unilateral pain. C is incorrect. Nausea and vomiting are more commonly associated with migraines, not tension-type headaches. D is the correct answer. Tension-type headaches typically present with bilateral, non-pulsatile pain without other features such as nausea and vomiting. What is a common side effect of corticosteroid therapy? Hypoglycemia, hyperkalemia, fluid retention, hypotension. Pause the video and choose your answer. A is incorrect. Corticosteroids are more likely to cause hyperglycemia, not hypoglycemia, as they can lead to insulin resistance and increase glucose production. B is incorrect. Corticosteroids can cause potassium loss and hypokalemia, not hyperkalemia. C is the correct answer. Corticosteroids can cause fluid retention, leading to increased blood volume and potential elevation of blood pressure. D is incorrect. Corticosteroids are more likely to cause hypertension due to fluid retention, not hypotension. A patient is prescribed warfarin for anticoagulation. 
Which food item should the patient consume consistently to maintain a stable INR? Green leafy vegetables, citrus fruits, dairy products, red meat. Pause the video and choose your answer. The correct answer is A. Consistent intake of vitamin K rich foods such as green leafy vegetables is important to maintain a stable INR while on warfarin. Vitamin K affects the blood clotting process and maintaining a consistent intake helps regulate warfarin dosing. B is incorrect. Citrus fruits are not directly related to INR stability with warfarin. C is incorrect. Dairy products do not have a significant impact on INR stability with warfarin. D is incorrect. Red meat is not directly associated with INR stability. The focus is on vitamin K rich foods like green leafy vegetables. Thank you for tuning in. Join us next Monday and click that subscribe button.